Hi, today's video is entitled Timeline to Failure. Recently, I had a phone conversation with a fella named Roy who lives in Texas. And Roy contacted me because he has a Newtone IM3003 that he installed when he built his house in 1986. And Roy got a hold of me because he's having some problems with his IM3003. And it turns out that Roy is a retired electrical engineer. So he knows a little or a lot, I think, about electronics. During my phone conversation with him about the problems with his 3003 and what the process would be to repair it, one of the comments that Roy made was he had downloaded a copy of the service manual and he had downloaded a copy of the schematic for his IM3003 and he was very certain and said in no uncertain terms that after reviewing the way it was designed, he said it was obviously designed to fail. And that's a pretty bold thing to say if you consider the fact that if his IM3003 was installed in 1986, it is now 31 years old. And yes, after asking him, he did say this was the very first time that he had ever had any kind of problem with it. So it's a little bit hard to say that a piece of equipment was designed to fail if it lasted 31 years. So because of that phone conversation, I decided it might be a good idea to make a video that discusses or goes over the facts of why things fail. Failures in a lot of cases, especially failures after a really long period of time, say for instance maybe 31 years, time is the biggest factor in the failure. It's more than anything else. It's more than the design of the equipment. It's usually in consumer electronics more important than how the equipment was used. It's not an installation related issue because those things show up early on when the equipment is relatively new. So time is the major factor in the failure of Roy's IM3003. To understand how time factors into the failure of a set like Roy's IM3003, you have to understand a little bit about the differences in design between modern intercom systems and the early intercom systems that Newtone made. The first modern Newtone intercom system was the IM806 and it was introduced in 1980. 82. And the thing that made the 806 different than almost every other model that came before it was the 806 was the first design that the system was turned on all the time. It was always turned on as long as there was electricity to the house. There was actually no on off switch for the unit. The intercom and the built-in door chime was always on and always waiting and ready to be used. Models before the 806 were still the design that for the most part they all had an actual mechanical on off switch and you would for instance turn the volume down on the master station click it to the off position and the entire set was turned off and the entire system was turned off the 806 and the the models that followed it which would be the IM3003 and 4006 and models after that are all the types of designs that are on all the time they're sitting on the wall turned on waiting to be used 24 hours a day, seven days a week from the day the installer walks out of the house. And one of the common things that I have as part of conversations with people about their modern systems is people will often tell me, well, I don't understand why we have a problem with it because we never really used it very much. And the amount of use doesn't really factor into any of the time factor for failure because even if you didn't use the system, the system is turned on waiting to be used and that's the part that really matters. So now that you understand that modern systems are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, let, let's look at how that adds up into the number of hours on it for any given time period. So it's really simple. There's 24 hours in every day so if you have 24 hours times seven days, which is one week, it's 168 hours per week, and there's 52 weeks in a year, so 
in a year's time, your intercom has accumulated 8,736 hours on it. And that's regardless of whether you use it or not. It's sitting there turned on waiting to be used. If you have 8,736 hours per year, here on our timeline, you can see we have years at the top and hours at the bottom. And I've divided it up into five year segments just to make it easy. So by the end of the first five years, your intercom has accumulated 43,800 hours. If we go out to 10 years, we're at 87,600 hours. 15 years, it's 131,400 hours. At 20 years, 175,200. At 25 years, we've broken over the 200,019 mark. At 30 years, it's 262,800 hours. If it lasts 35 years, you're at 306,600 hours, and it increases from there. We have 359 and change, 394,000 and change, and at the 50-year mark, we have 438,000 hours of time on a set. The reason that this is important and it's different than sets that have an on-off switch is sets that have an on-off switch typically spend approximately 40 to 50 percent of their life turned off. So if a if a modern set would last perhaps between 20 and 25 years, an older style set with an on-off switch might last double that because it spends a lot of its time turned off. So in the case of Roy's IM3003, which was 31 years old, 31 years is just about right here on our timeline. In round numbers, it would have approximately 271,536 hours of time on his set. So here's Roy's IM3003. That's pretty good. I would bet that Roy doesn't have very many things in his house that have lasted 31 years and it's the very first time that it needs to be replaced or repaired. But back to the reason why things fail. So we've established how the hours rack up every five years over the, over the life of a set. And we estimate Roy's set has 271,000 and change worth of hours on it. What typically fails over time in most modern electronic equipment? Well, over here, we have some symbols for the six most common electronic components that are in modern equipment. We have transistors, diodes, inductors. Inductors are little coils, primarily. We have resistors, integrated circuits, and capacitors. Most of these are types of components that, in theory, will last in an ideal situation, in an ideal circuit, or even in a real life circuit without any kind of problem, most of these components will last virtually forever. Transistors, not that many problems. Diodes, not that many problems. Inductors, almost never a problem. Resistors, very reliable. Integrated circuits, also very reliable. And then we come to capacitors. So capacitors are sort of the troublemaker in the group of six. Now, it's not to say that sets that have transistors, diodes, inductors, integrated circuits, and resistors can't have problems with those components. However, for the most part, problems with these components, the ones with the blue checks, they don't happen on their own typically. Usually these type of parts are casualties of other failures in the circuit which place either a greater demand on these parts or will supply too much voltage to these parts. So these parts can certainly have and do have problems, but usually they're problems that are caused by other failures in the set. Now that's not to say that there haven't been certain types of transistors that after 10 or 15 years, 
proved to be problematic because maybe it was a poor design or maybe it was a poor choice for its particular application or something like that. But those are more unusual circumstances than is normal. So what typically goes wrong in a set like Roy's IM3003? Well, initially the problem is that capacitors in the master station will fail over time because remember it's 31 years or over 271,000 hours of time and as the capacitors begin to fail they stop doing the job that they're in the circuit to do and that causes problems with other components in the set and it causes operational problems because they're not functioning in the manner that they're supposed to. Unlike other solid state components like transistors, diodes, integrated circuits, capacitors actually have a predetermined lifespan. So for almost every single electronic component ever made since the dawn of time, manufacturers will provide you with something that's referred to as a data sheet. And the data sheet is the technical information for that particular type of component and that specific component that you're looking up. And it gives you all of the performance characteristics and parameters for it and all of the technical information that an electronic engineer needs to know to figure out whether he wants to incorporate it into the circuit that he's working on or not. This is a data sheet for an aluminum electrolytic capacitor, very similar to the types that are in Roy's IM3003. However, this is a modern data sheet from a, a currently made part because finding data sheets from 1986 is almost impossible to do, especially for a part like a capacitor, which why would you want to know that? Because you're not going to put a 31-year-old part in any new design. Design. However, this is from a name brand company. This is from the Nichion company, which is one of the premier manufacturers of capacitors nowadays, always has been actually. And I chose this particular one. This is for a series of capacitors that they make. It's the TVX series, which is a standard general purpose type capacitor. This is very similar to what would be in Roy's set. However, since this is 2017 and not 1986, the quality of manufacturing will be better today because generally speaking, the quality of manufacturing for good quality components is higher than today than what it was in 1986. And here we have an example. This is the capacitor that's on the data sheet. This is a Nichion TVX. This is a 470 microfarad at 25 volt capacitor. This is a brand new one. We keep these in stock because we use them in older designs that use this style of capacitor. But I chose it because it's sort of your bog standard kind of capacitor. It's not a low end one. It's not one of those ones with a name on it that you can't pronounce because it doesn't have any vowels in it. It doesn't come from some country that you may not want to buy capacitors from. This is a highly regarded name brand component and that's what you'd want to put into your set if you're repairing it. One of the pieces of information that the manufacturer provides in the data sheet, in this case the Nichion TVX capacitor, is a rating for what they call endurance. And endurance is basically the what the expected lifespan of the capacitor in a number of hours at a specific temperature. And the TVX series of capacitors, the endurance says that it's rated at its rated voltage it will last for 2,000 hours at 85 degrees Celsius. Okay, so for all of you folks who don't do metric and do Fahrenheit instead, I have a little conversion here. So 85 degrees Celsius equals 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So this capacitor right here is designed to last for 2,000 hours at 185 degrees. Now, most people's homes aren't 185 degrees inside. So it's a fairly widely accepted fact that the life of a capacitor doubles for every 10 degrees in Celsius that the temperature drops. So that's what this chart shows here. We're gonna do it in Celsius, but I also have the Fahrenheit temperatures over here, which we'll talk about at the end. So at 85 degrees, the capacitor will last 2,000 hours. 
If we drop it 10 degrees to 75 degrees Celsius, it now will last 4,000 hours. And as we go down, we have 65 degrees at 8,000 hours. So the hours keep doubling every time we drop the temperature. At 45 degrees C, I'm sorry, at 55 degrees C, we're at 16,000 hours. 45 degrees C, we're at 32,000 hours. 35 degrees Celsius, 64,000 hours. And now it starts to get to be a really long time. 25 degrees C lasts 128,000 hours. And 15 degrees C will last 256,000 hours. And the important temperatures and figures here are really most likely the last two, which would be 25 degrees C is 77 degrees Fahrenheit and 15 degrees C is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And for the most part, these temperatures and these numbers here are the ones that are going to apply most to something like Roy's IM3003. And that's because an IM3003 is installed in Roy's home and Roy's home on an average, even though he's in Texas, but he's probably got air conditioning, his home is usually probably somewhere in this, you know, 77 to 59 degree Fahrenheit, you know, in the winter time when it's cold and, or at night, the temperature of the house drops, but in the summertime, it's hot and the temperature goes up and it's going to fluctuate, but these are sort of guideline numbers. So if you average it out over this, his set, the capacitors in his set should last somewhere between 128,000 hours and 256,000 hours. And if a piece of equipment were installed in let's say it was a steel manufacturing plant where it's out on the floor and they have big furnaces and all of the sparks flying all over the place and molten steel and all like that and the average temperature in that place could be you know 120 degrees then it's going to have a much shorter life because it's going to be way up in this range somewhere where we're at like 16,000 to 32,000 hours but for home equipment where the temperature is more controlled we're more in this range here so how does this factor into this and Roy's thought that his IM3003 was designed to fail well if we look at these numbers here his set in the capacitors in his set in theory are going to last somewhere between 128,000 and 256,000 hours which puts the age uh, or the life expectancy of the capacitors somewhere in the between just maybe 14 years to just about 30 years maybe 29 years so maybe here and here is what you would expect it to last and because most things sometimes components will fail on the young end of things and sometimes they'll fail at the far end of things it becomes more complicated because failures i don't know if you ever remember in school but uh, in your math class they would talk about how the bell-shaped curve and there's things that fail here there's things that fail on the average and there's things that fail at the other end at the far end of the, the bell-shaped curve so anywhere in this range would be considered normal the normal lifespan of it and here's Roy set down here at about 31 years so it went longer than what would be typically expected at the lowest temperature that we put on the list here. The real point of this video is to point out the fact that while it's unfortunate that Roy's IM3003 did fail, it did actually last longer than what you would expect it to. And as well designed as it is, and with the quality of components that were used back in the day, I don't think anybody at Newtone would have ever imagined that Roy would still have his IM3003 after 31 years. I'm sure the people in the sales department would have hoped that he would have replaced it at least once and maybe twice in that amount of time. But since it is a well-made model, it lasted as long as it did. The, the point of the video is to point out to people that it's deceiving the amount of, let's call it wear and tear, that a piece of equipment accumulates over the years 
until it finally gets to the point where it does actually fail. One of the other things that a lot of manufacturers will include in, a da in the data sheet is a graph of the life expectancy of their given part. And so here we have a graph that I drew, and this is based roughly on the one in the data sheet, and I will asked to be excused because I'm not a real great graph drawing person so I tried to make it as accurate as possible but what we have here is on this leg of the graph we have the percentage of newness and here we have the time in years and what the dots represent is roughly the failure curve of this particular component so we start off here at a hundred and for the first five years you get off pretty easy because it only drops down a little bit but then as we go down uh, across the graph in five year increments, see if I can draw this halfway right, you can see that it slowly drops and drops and drops until we get to the point here. This is Roy's 31 year mark here. So you can see how it kind of meanders and drops down and down and down till you get to here. Once you get to this point right here, oftentimes like Roy said, it's the point, what I call the point of non-operation. Things have failed enough. And what you, the other thing to remember is, Roy doesn't have just one capacitor in his IM3003. Roy has about 30 capacitors in his IM3003. And each one of those is going to be failing to some degree. Some of them will fail faster than others. It's not like they all got together and had a vote and decided, hey, we should all last 31 years because of manufacturing tolerances and things like that. Some will last longer than others. Some will fail more dramatically than others. And as they fail, and more and more of them fail, they start to put an extra demand on the other components in it, in the circuit, and things basically stop working. So once you reach the point of non-operation, which is where Roy said here is at 31 years, in my opinion, we can take the line and go straight down with it because you're at zero. You're at a point where the set doesn't work anymore and there is no more expected life in any of those components. The other interesting point on the graph is this point right here. This is roughly the 50% 50, 50 point. And the reason that's important is, in my experience, there are two ways that Newtone Intercom master stations will typically fail. You'll have the sets like Roy's which have this long, slow, gradual decline into failure and it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes and it really doesn't show much in the way of problems until you get right down at the very end. Here we are back at 31 years. And that's really the best case scenario. I'm sure that somewhere here in the time frame there was probably little telltale signs of failure and a lot of people just basically ignore those, but sometimes it will go right to the very end. The other way that sets fail is often somewhere here around the 50% point and those sets, instead of meandering down here to the bottom of the scale, they'll go, they'll follow the line, they'll hit somewhere around the 50% point and then suddenly they'll do this, boom, right down to the bottom, like that. And those are the sets that I refer to as the ones that fell off the cliff. It doesn't happen with 3003s that often. It does happen probably 40% of the time on IM and IMA 4006s. It's not uncommon when I talk to people, they'll tell me things like, it was fine yesterday and I, when I got up this morning it was making this awfully loud humming buzzing noise through all the stations. And those are the sets that it reached a point here, sometimes around 50% or so, and it simply fell off the cliff. It went boom and it failed. And usually what causes that is there'll be one of the primary capacitors usually in the power supply, and it's suddenly failed. And it's a dramatic enough failure, and it's an important enough part in the power supply that 
it does this. And when it gets down here at the bottom, you have this ginormous buzzing sound on all the speakers. So that's why we have a timeline to failure because time is the most, inf most important factor in how long a product lasts along with its basic underlying design. Equipment that's turned on all the time and it's not just new tone intercom systems. If you look around your house at night, turn off all the lights and look around and see how many little glowing LEDs you have in your house. Every one of those items that has a little glowing LED that you can see in the dark is a product that's turned on all the time and those items are racking up tremendous amounts of hours on them as they sit there waiting for you to use them. That's the ins and outs of the timeline to failure. I hope you gain some understanding about the life expectancy of your Newtone intercom system and how time really is the nemesis of your system. But there's nothing you can do about it. it. It's in your house, it's turned on, it's waiting to be used, and they accumulate a lot of time. Fortunately, most sets, if I had to put a number on it, on average, they last somewhere between 25 and 30 years before they need to be repaired. And that's pretty good nowadays. Good value for something that only costs, in 1986, the 3003 Master Station, costs a little bit under $300. It's pretty good for 31 years. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you might have learned something from this. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the little subscribe box on our YouTube homepage. If you click on the little bell next to the subscribe button, You'll get notifications through email when we post a new video. Subscribing to our channel is appreciated. I hope you learned something. See you on the next video.